What's up, everyone? Just want to say Merry Christmas to everyone and pen best deck, baby. Let's go. What better day than pen jumps to come back on the channel than today, baby? Let's go. But there is a problem, boys. We only put up like eight negates, and uh, this meta they put up like way more than that, bro. Like, look at Zodiacs, bro. Like, holy shit. Like, Zodiacs can literally end on a Dryden and pass. Holy shit. That Lich literally ends on Conquistador, Hakuero, <laughs> Ghost Bell, Pass. Like, that's so powerful, man. And, buddy, don't get me started on Drytron players, okay? I put up more negates than girls they've even seen before, okay? Then don't get me started. Don't get me started on how good Virtual World is. <laughs> it's on a trap card that pops one card and a VF... A V... A V... <laughs> Ends on a VFD. VFD is crazy. VFD is insane. Virtual World is insane. Insanely shit, baby. Cause Pen Best Deck. Everyone knows it's a special day today. It's Pendulum Day. So in today's video, I will be showcasing my updated Pendulum Deck profile to absolutely destroy this meta. So if you guys are ready for this video, smash the subscribe button. This whole next five days, I'm gonna be posting a five holiday special for the Christmas, for the holidays. Five videos in a row, all pendulums, baby. Today, tomorrow, the day after, the day after that. But we better hit 40,000 subscribers by the end of this week's special. So smash the subscribe button for more pendulum greatness, baby. And if you guys ready for this video, do me a big favor. Do me a big favor, everyone. Do me a big favor. Grab your nearest table, baby. Grab your nearest table and hit one for Electromite. Let's fucking go! Pen best deck, baby. It's time for the updated Pendulum deck profile to destroy the entire meta. Drytron, BFD, Julia, Ellen, you're all shit. Pen best deck. Let's go! This is going to be a long 35 minute video showcasing both the deck profile and the new combo tutorial with real life cards, baby. So stay tuned to the end of the video and check it out. Also, don't forget to check out the Patreon for even more Pendulum content, baby. I'm posting two replays with this deck in action right now. So go check it out. Anyways, let's get started, boys. It's Pendulum time. Let's go. There's plenty of text in this deck. So make sure to stay tuned to the very end of the video. I'll explain everything you guys need to know. And there's lots and lots of knowledge to be deducted in this video so stay tuned till the end but before we do get started check out the beautiful christmas sale trip electrum right here the most beautiful playman in the game on sale for only 30 dollars for today baby so go check it out right now while you can trip electrum oh baby this playmat is beautiful so let's get started boys it is now time for the best dex deck profile let's go we're gonna start the deck profile off with the best card in Yu-Gi-Oh. that is servant of endymion obviously you need to play this but also on the same level of servant of endymion is magical abductor what people don't understand about this card is it searches your entire deck this is a stratos for your entire deck and not just a stratos the fact that you can also normal summon one magical abductor and then scale the other magical abductor and then keep searching is ridiculous there are a lot of crazy plays with abductor that people do not use and don't even recognize one crazy play is you could scale a magical abductor, put magical abductor in the scale. If you have a hand with a bunch of spell cards, and this deck plays an insane amount of spell cards, you use abductor to search abductor. You use your daybreaker to pop your own abductor. Then you scale back the abductor and keep plussing. And then you're able to pendulum summon for free as well. There's lots of cool plays, but the number one play used for abductor, this format, is something that no one can even see coming. And that is you scale magical abductor and you use magical abductor's effect to search Archfiend Eccentric. You then scale the Archfiend Eccentric, use the Archfiend Eccentric to pop your opponent's Chuchi Trap card. And then, since the Trap card is popped, now your Mighty Master could resolve to pop your opponent's entire Virtual World board and end on a board of negates where your opponent cannot play next turn. And it's very easy to resolve Mighty Master versus, Pen versus VFD because your Mythical Beast do not activate. So Magical Doctor is absolutely required to play in the new Pendulum version. And in fact, any Pendulum version. It literally searches anything in your deck. Next, we're going to play two other cards here that hold spell counters, and there's a reason for these two. This deck was built to defeat the entire meta. So on top of the Servant and Abductor, we also play two Reflection and two Magister. There are specific reasons behind it. Yes, sometimes Magister breaks, 1000%. But, I cannot explain this enough. A board of five negates loses to one Zeus. Normal summon one Zodiac, and you all your normal summon one Zodiac, 
and all five of your negates are dead because of Zeus. Same thing goes for any deck that could put up two rank ones. So the Drytron deck that puts up two rank ones and then goes into Zeus, you can't negate any of that. Your whole board's gone. Uh, so you need to be prepared for that, especially against Zodiac, which could go Zeus for like four effects, three effects. So the reason, the way you do that is by Magister bringing up Reflection or Reflection coming up from Selene under an Absolute Dragon. So you need to ensure that you have plenty of ways to do it. So you want to make sure to play as many as you possibly can and hold as many cards that could hold spell counters as possible. Next, you obviously want to play three of your boss monster, Mighty Master. Mighty Master is so important because Mighty Master is how you clear VFD. Mighty Master is a spell card effect and not a monster effect. So by, act, by having cards in the field like Mythical Beast Jackal, which you could Pendulum Summon or Summon out with Cerberus, yeah, this holds like 15 counters and then you Mighty Master blow up everything. Now you're guaranteed to have negates on the board after you clear your opponent's board because you can't attack and kill. Also, a cool thing on your VFD is that you play, if you play enough level 7s, which is a, a, you're a, able to do because of Reflection and Master, you can go into Absolute Dragon, and then you can actually sync for uh, Link into a Vortex Dragon. So you can make a Vortex Dragon, and then Absolute will trigger under VFD because Absolute is a water, and your opponent is obviously going to call Dark. So you can still bring up Absolute Dragon. So it's very important to play a lot of level 7s, and the rest of the decks basically spells and a few other monsters here, so your Master will always resolve. Next, we do play a Mythical Beast Count. We play three Cerberus, two Jackal, and one Garuda. There's a specific reason behind it. Again, if VFD was not a card, I probably would not be playing this, to be honest with you. But if you look at this specific meta. Now, look at the specific meta. No one, Buster Dragon is banned. You can't play Buster. No one ends on Savage Dragon anymore. Your Cerberus is going to resolve a lot more compared to past metas. So Cerberus is actually very good this meta. It could, uh, in my opinion, after Pendulum, the best deck is Eldritch. Cerberus could banish the El Lich. Cerberus could banish a Verde Anaconda to attack into a 3,000 uh, 3, Dragoon. Uh, Cerberus could search Mythical Beast Garuda, which is not used for its effect to bounce, but it's actually used for its effect as an MST. Because I can't stress this enough. You have eight built-in main deck MSTs. You destroy back row decks, but mainly you MST the Chuchi instantly before the Chuchi could hit your Mighty Master. And then I don't care what board Virtual World ends on. You're still breaking it no matter what with any decent hand. Because you have AMSTs, Pop Chuchi, and you Mighty Master blow everything up, and you, they can't do anything to stop it. So it's very vital to end this. Even if your opponent ends on uh, any way they want to look at it, they can end on a Bamboozling Shadow, they can end on a Crystal Wing, uh, all these are spell effects. So it doesn't even matter what they end on. So that's why this format is very important to play all these MSTs. So on top of the three Cerberus and the Garuda, on top of the three abductors, abductor searches Archfiend Eccentric. So you're literally, I'm, I'm not joking when I say this here, you're literally playing eight MSTs in the main deck. I can't stress this enough how important this is in a meta that focuses on Chuchi virtual on, on VFD. If they just end on VFD, you're killing them because you break their board and end on multiple negates. There, I can't stress this enough. I'm gonna be doing many videos in the future which are going to be doing Pendulum vs. Virtual World in-depth duels, in-depth analysis, Pendulum vs. Zodiac, Pendulum vs. Drytron, Pendulum vs. Alich, and how we win. We win by this absolutely amazing uh, deck list that is built specifically for this meta. So make sure to play these for this specific meta. It's very important. I can't stress it enough. Also, if you guys got this far, you see what I'm doing here in Electrum? We're not holding hands. We're actually smashing the subscribe button right now. So you guys should do the same. So smash the subscribe button, boys. Because if we hit if we hit 39,000 subscribers by by Tuesday, I'm going to literally release the craziest vlog you guys have ever seen by Tuesday, though. So s touch the subscribe button, just like these guys are. Anyways, next you're going to play... These are proxies for two Magician Souls. You need the Magician Souls. I'm not even joking. Magician Souls are absolutely required. Reason being is that... If you can't play, don't play Magician Souls, do not play Magical Abductor. If you're not going to play Magical Abductor, why even play Pendulums? Why would you play a deck without playing its Searcher? Why would you play Heroes without Stratos? Why would you play Virtual World without Lulu? That's like Pendulums without Abductor. And without a good level 1 to search with Abductor's normal summon effect, Abductor does n is not nearly as powerful because now you get locked a lot with the Cerberus and the Abductor. So you're absolutely required to play a level 1. And Jester Confit is probably the best one to play that is not Magician Souls or a Droll and Lockbird. But I refuse to play without a Magician Souls because then your normal summon abductor is ass. Normal abductor special Jester just sucks. And you want value to disc to send off uh, your Citadel Institution. So you need the, the souls. 
So one souls I can live with. Two you don't really need. Two you don't really need. But one souls this is searched a lot. Servant specials abductor way more often than servant specials jackal. No, only noobs are main decking Nibiru right now. This is the format for pendulums to absolutely reign supreme. No hand trap is bought. What the hell does Skullmeister or a, or a, a DD Crow do? Who cares? Make sure to play the, the, the souls. This is the best way to do it. Server specials abductor all the time. And then abductor searches the souls. Next, you play two blue board, two secrets, one knowledge. One important thing to mention. When you're facing against uh, Virtual World, you side out your two Magician Souls, one Blue Boy, and one Secrets. I'm going to get into the side deck uh, later in the future. Keeping one of these against them are totally fine. You can also take all seven if you want, but Virtual World is actually really easy to beat if you play your deck correctly. So I think this you could keep in these three, but having a Secret Knowledge is good because of the Artemis Link 1. If you play it, you can just Knowledge away even a Magical Abductor and still draw two, thanks to the Artemis Link 1 that came out. But two blue boy, two secret, one knowledge is correct. More draw cards. One upstart into the world, triple desires. We don't play Chronograph in this build. Uh, so because you want to focus on getting your MST for the virtual world cards. Hence, you, you want as many draw cards as possible. So here, you're actually playing 10 draw cards. Which is like literally 10 more than every single deck in the meta. Well, virtual world plays desires. Big deal. You play these 10. You have the best draw power in the game to draw into the side deck. And the side deck is really how you destroy your opponent. Because you're essentially playing a 30 card deck with this build. And with this 30 card deck, you see all your auto win side cards post side deck. So Vanity Ruler does nothing post side deck. You have 10,000 ways to stop it. Virtual World, Chuchi does, and the VFD does nothing. You have plenty of ways to stop it. So after these 10 draw cards, you have even more consistency here. There's three more search cards in Institution. And three Citadels. Citadel sucks, okay? But Citadel is good in this meta. The reason being is that you don't want to lose to one Zodiac. So you want all the ways to stop one normal summon with some negates. So I refuse to lose the normal summon Whiptail, uh, Link Climb into six, or XYZ Climb into six material Zeus, and then your whole six, six negate board is gone. But if you have Citadel on the board, Garuda now becomes a way to stop the Zodiac deck. You also have Reflection. Uh, this is very similar to the list I used uh, when I had uh, two elect or when I had zero Electromite in the three Electromite format, or sorry, in the one Electromite format, but uh, just better made for this specific meta. You also have Reflection to bounce the Zodiac Monster, but the Citadels are important for that. Citadels are also important for VFD, or Mighty Master Pop VFD. Should be straightforward enough, right? And then lastly for the spells, I also play three Mastery and one Instant Fusion. If you look at all these spells, all these 20 spells serve a serious purpose for you to be able to trigger your main purpose going second in this deck, which is Mighty Master. Pendulums is not ironically the best deck this format simply because it has an amazing Drytron matchup and has an amazing Virtual World matchup. What is any deck doing against... Now that we're done talking about the matchups we have against this meta, how do we defeat Virtual World boards? How do we defeat Drytron boards? The better question you guys should be asking is the same question I brought up in the very beginning of this video. What the heck is Virtual World doing against your deck? What the heck is Drytron doing against your deck? If you negate the Lulu, Dry Virtual World doesn't do jack shit. If you negate the Alpha, Drytron isn't doing jack shit. So, what are they doing to your 6 negate board? Let alone what you're doing to their garbage 1 interruption board. So, pen best deck this format. Links now. We got one Crowley, one Cross Sheep, one Daybreaker, one Mascarena. These are your generic Link 2s that you 1000% need. Mascarena as another way. Like I said, I refuse to lose to one Zodiac. Before this video is over, I'll discuss the typical basic combo you do against any deck going first in a blind combo to ensure that you have a bunch of negates protected by a Mascarena IP. Uh, uh, IP Muscarine and Unicorn, or if it's not Unicorn, it's a Reflection with the Magister or Reflection Special Summon by Selene. You cannot lose to one Zodiac, but at the same time, you don't want to lose to other decks by having no negates. So typically, you try and put up one Bounce via Mascarena or Reflection com or Garuda combined with like four negates is the typical new combo that we do uh, in this build. After those, I also play two Nightmares. If you guys play Drytron this format, you guys witness how powerful Nightmares are going second. They were always amazing when people just stopped playing them, and I don't understand why. Playing a Pendulum deck, you're always going to be able to have, like, uh, five muscles in the field that don't do anything, as it, it might seem. But you might also have, like, one random card you don't really need in your hand. It could be, for example, a Cerberus you draw, or an extra Mastery, or an extra Desires that you can't use on the same turn. Something along those lines. So, after you Pendulum five monsters... 
What do you want to do with them? You can link climb very easily with the nightmares, ending on a unicorn to then go into access code. So pendulum is the best deck to be able to utilize nightmare cards because you don't care about your monsters on board. You have so many for free. So I do highly recommend to use the entire nightmare package for going second. You dismantle boards like it's nothing and OTK with the access. Also another great way to OTK, Celine link climbing. After you nightmare like incredible amount of times, you could use the last nightmare with the random spellcaster like Magician Souls and then go into a Celine. Celine special something else, access code, GG buddy, let's go. Also over these two nightmares, the only cards that are to play, I'm just gonna mention right now, is the Link 1 Magistus Artemis Maiden. I don't own one right now, so I'm playing these. Uh, if you really want, you could remove one Cerberus for the Magistus Maiden, and that's good. Also, Geonator Transverser is another Elta Dragoon other than Axis Code Talker and Cerberus. So if you want, you could play that over one of these as well. But I think having access to all the Nightmares is crazy if we're going second. But I do recommend playing the Magistus Artemis Maiden. It makes drawing knowledge actually good. You play one Appaloosa as well, which is good to have. And then Absolute Vortex, and then for the Instant Fusion, one Millennium. Please do not play Winda. Only play Winda if you have more ways to search the Instant Fusion. But if you're only waiting to Instant Fusion, or the only way to summon Winda is one Instant Fusion, it's literally just not worth the extra deck. One Fusion spot for Instant Fusion is probably not worth the extra deck, let alone two. That's unbelievably shit. So this is the best one to play because it stops Droll. Post side deck, you have five ways to stop Droll. But I'm going to discuss how to side deck with Pendulums in a future video this week. This entire week, I'll be discussing the next five days a bunch of Pendulum related content. It's been a while since I posted, so you guys are about to witness an absolutely amazing amount of Pendulum content for the next week. So make sure to stay tuned, you guys are going to witness some amazing videos. Anyways, that's it here for the deck profile. I'm not going to witness the basic combo. You guys are witness the basic combo you do going first against anything and you don't really know what you play. Let's go, boys. Let's go. We don't even need to shuffle because Pen Bez deck and every hand's broken, but we're going to shuffle in front of you guys anyways. Every single hand does this combo. Every single hand is five negates. It literally doesn't matter. One gigantic, gigantic, amazing upside for Pendulum this format is to look at the hand traps people are main decking. Skullmeister, Ghost Spell, DD Crow. They all don't do jack shit against Pendulums, man. Pendulums is just crazy this format. Even after they side deck. Which deck plays Gamma or Nibiru? Some decks could side the Nibiru. Okay, Gamma is nowhere seen unless you're playing uh, Virtual World. Like, there's like... Well, the only hand trap that matters is Ash Blossom and Droll and Lockbird post side deck. No one mains the Droll. And you have five ways in the side deck to stop Droll. I'll be discussing my side deck and how to side deck in a future video. Also in a future video, I'll be discussing how to destroy Virtual World specifically how to destroy drytron specifically how to destroy zodiac specifically how to destroy ellich specifically so stay tuned for those five videos hit the subscribe button so you guys don't miss those five videos all of them will be posted within the next week anyways let's get started on this combo tutorial utilizing a basic average hand and against something you don't know so we draw a mastery reflection blue boy citadel and institution so this is a good hand uh it's a very good hand and a lot of you guys look at this you're thinking okay citadel uh it seems like it might be like a not a plus at all it could be a neg one but i'm going to show you guys the value of, of citadel here no matter what you face this value of citadel will always be sky high all right now that we know everything in our hand you want to start to think okay i'm going first and i need to end on the multiple negates with a way to reflection you hard your reflection you want to try and resolve it this turn go into absolute this turn to be able to just in case your opponent plays zodiacs to Celine, special reflection, bounces normal summon. And if you guys barrage or tanky, or sorry, barrage or monster reborn or whatever, then you just negate it with your negates. Anyways, you always start to send off with Blue Boy. Reason being is you want to bait any hand trap. No one's playing Valor, no one's playing Impermanence, no one's playing Gamma in the main deck whatsoever. Uh, Virtual World could play Gamma. Even if they Gamma this, you literally just don't give a flying fuck. And maybe they could Herald if they're playing Drytron, but you also just don't give a fuck. So you're going to search for a secrets here. You're not going to activate the secrets at all. You're actually going to save the secrets for a while. Uh, you have Desires, the six card, broken. Uh, so you're breaking any deck going second as well. If you're facing against Virtual World here at VFD, you don't even need this for VFD whatsoever. You're breaking their board without, without it very easily. Anyways, so after this, you want to make sure you hold your counters. And you have to deem to yourself what's more important to hold counters. So you don't open a Mythical Beast here for the Institution. So you want to keep that in mind. So you save this for the end. And then you also want to keep in mind that these three hold counters. So which one do you want to activate first? You have to think in your head. Okay, I'm going first. I want to put up four negates with like a reflection, right? That's like goal. I want to put up a vortex for an omni negate, some jackals, some vortex, and some reflection. Okay, 
So how are you going to do that? Maybe as well with Citadel starting, you can also search Garuda at the end with this to have like six negates. So anyways, let's get started. Here, I think the best thing is you cannot activate Mastery right away. You need one of these to hold counters. I think Reflection is going to easily get three counters. So here you activate Citadel first. The reasoning behind it is that you're going to be able to have enough counters on this and this extremely, extremely easily. Next, I'm going to scale the Reflection. Okay, and then I'm going to activate the Mastery. That's the way I'm going to do this. And I'm going to use Mastery to search Servant of Endymion. I'm going to freely scale the Servant of Endymion here to give my opponent a chance to Ash this if he wants to. You always want to bait, go through the motion of Ash. Ash doesn't do fuck all, okay? Uh, you want to go through the motions here. You have plenty of counters on, on uh, both Citadel and Reflection. And you can resolve Reflection at any time to free your scale up from the Servant by utilizing Institution to search any card to hold the spell counter on and continue going from there. A cool play here as well is to use Institution to search Abductor, use Reflection to Special Abductor. Lots of cool plays you could do. So you now want to think how many counters are in everything. You have three counters on Reflection, you have uh, three counters on Citadel, and you have zero on the Servant. So what I'm going to do here is you want to calculate a bit. I'm going to scale the Institution, okay? You have an opportunity to search for Garuda, but you already have plenty of negates. You don't need to do it. I'd rather do a play that guarantees victory here in Game 1. I'm going to use Institution here to search for Magical Abductor. I'm going to remove uh, every counter on Citadel. So there's four counters on Citadel, four on Reflection. So I'm going to remove uh, three on Citadel, one on, one on the Reflection, leaving only one counter left on Citadel and three on Reflection. I'm going to use this to search uh, Magical Abductor, okay? After this, I'm going to use Reflection's Effect, okay? I'm going to special summon the Reflection, I'm going to special summon the Abductor from hand. This now leaves one counter, one counter, uh, one counter. Now, you have an opportunity if you really want to, uh, but what I'm uh, to, to like wait a little bit. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna link these. I understand reflection will go to the extra deck, uh, meaning you can't special summon it back, but it doesn't matter. It's important to go and to, to do outside the brain thinking to get the most plus, and no one recognizes the power of Abductor's monster effect here. So now, here we're gonna uh, go into Crowley, this being the fourth summon. Game one, you do not need to play around Nibiru. Game one, if you play around Nibiru, you literally already, if your opponent Nibiru's your game one, you already won the duel because that means your opponent's a chimp and is playing a garbage deck. Because Nibiru is bad against the top five decks this format. So, anyways, this deck spams like crazy, right? The Jester Convents are proxies for Magician Souls. Just so you guys are aware. So, since this deck uh, spams like crazy, you, I want to show you guys how to really utilize the effect of Abductor in an amazing way. We're going to use Crowley here a second time. Uh, uh, Blue Boy first. And then you want to get the value of Crowley. Doesn't matter what you search because you use Secrets to search the other. So, it just doesn't matter. And then you're going to activate your Secrets you already have. To search any of the others doesn't matter and then uh you're going to knowledge it away at this point you have you summon four times so even if your opponent is a chimp uh you still win uh so you want to shuffle your deck as much as you can uh after you use knowledge abductor will have three counters and servant will have three counters so you're gonna plus even more after this is done you're gonna activate the knowledge sending the blue boy from hand saving monsters in the field uh sending these to draw two cards so we're gonna draw two uh garuda and desires okay that's fine you have three counters on Abductor, three counters on Servant. So here you're going to activate Abductor's Effect to search Magician Souls. Uh, this is why you guys... I, I remember I told you guys at the beginning, you need to play one, at least one Magician... This is a proxy for Magician Souls, the Jester Confit. This is why I said at the very beginning, you need Souls. I will not play this deck without Souls. Because you guys, you guys just saw, I literally use my normal summon, but I use Institution to search Abductor, Reflection Effect to special the Abductor. If I didn't have access to Abductor, I'd use Servant to special Abductor. Because Souls is about to draw two cards from Institution and Citadel, and it'll put a monster in Graveyard to summon off Selene. It's literally vital to have a Magician Souls. Just one, because the one gets searched. That's all you need. At this point, you have to think to yourself, okay, am I facing a chimp or not? Because if he main decks Nibiru, and if you go for souls, you get really, really punished here. But what I'm going to do here is, you don't know what your opponent plays, okay? You really have no idea. So what I'm going to do here, because I'm very, I'm recognized, I'm going to draw four times. I'm going to draw one from souls, two from souls, and two from desires. I know I'm going to draw four times. So just to be safe, I'm going to actually use Servant's Effect to special a Jackal King. Just to be safe. Just to be safe. I know he's not playing a, a Nibiru in the main deck, but just in case. Now, this puts you at a lot of counters for Citadel, which we'll use Magister's Effect on late in the duel. You have a Magician Souls this. You didn't even Pendulum Summon yet. You didn't even Desires yet. Look how plus you are. You already have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 cards on the field, and you're not even near done yet. Also, just in case you need a low scale, you can always Daybreak or Pop the Servant to be able to get your low scale if you happen to draw into a high scale. 
Anyways, now you're gonna special summon your Magician Souls, and here uh, you you have an option. I would send a Mighty Master. Uh, it'll be good to draw into a Mighty Master, but by sending a Mighty Master, you leave the play open by uh, special summoning this via Selene, use a spell card, negate the spell with Mighty Master, and then negate serve uh, negate it by bouncing Servant back to your hand, ensuring that you're gonna have a counter. You can also bounce the Abductor back to your hand to actually resolve Abductor's effect. So I'm gonna send Mighty Master to the graveyard here with Souls. And then you have an opportunity here to Desires first if you want to, in case you draw Magister or, some, or an Abductor to resolve Citadel and Grave. So you know what? we're actually gonna do that. We're in Desires right now. Get Banish the top 10. I'm gonna show you guys the top 10 that we banished. So we banished uh, nothing that mattered. One Mighty Master, and uh, essentially for going second. And we banished two Abductors, which we can't draw, which is kind of sad, but it doesn't matter. A lot of our low scales are banished there, but uh, we already know Celine's gonna, we're gonna negate some random spell to bounce that back with. So this is what we got. Okay, so now this is where you have to make the conscious decision where if you want to, you could do a lot of plays here, okay? You have to make a conscious decision. Do you want to resolve Magister this turn or do you not? Sometimes you literally do not have space around. If you link away the Jackal, you could potentially get Nibiru, which defeats the whole purpose of even summoning this Jackal. You've already banished your second Magician Souls, the proxy of just your Confit. So Abductor can't search anything. This is being the proxy of, of, of Magician Souls. Uh, abductor can't search anything if you link away the abductor and manage to bring it back so you don't get too much value out of this what i recommend doing right here is actually a very uh very cool play so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to completely uh not magister effect i actually don't care about magister at all right now uh, i'm not even going to look at magister's effect what i'm going to do here is i'm actually going to use the souls to send both institution and the citadel you can very easily resolve the, resolve the Citadel if you want with the Magister, but it's literally just not going to be worth it. You can link these into Selene, uh, special the Magister and the Abductor, but Abductor, they won't get any effects. But I'd prefer the Magister to stay in the scale for now. So what I'm going to do is simply use the Magician Souls and send both the Citadel and the Institution. The Citadel put it in work by getting enough cards to Institution, and it, we drew very good, so we didn't need the Citadel to add us more cards. Uh, so we don't really need to, but uh, that's we could draw two from that. What also, what else we could do is actually very, very genius as well. Is go Celine, special Mighty Master, negate the Magister, put it in graveyard to bounce Abductor back, scale the Abductor, activate Abductor's effect to search from Citadel, and then use Souls. You know what? That's actually the best play. That plays genius. So we're gonna. I'm fucking. I'm so smart. It literally hurts my soul. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna link the, not the souls, we're gonna link away the Servant of Endymion and the Crowley into our first Selene of the day. And then we're gonna use Selene's effect to special that Mighty Master. Then what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna save the Garuda because the Garuda is gonna be in a gate that my opponent does not, is not aware about. I'm going to scale the Magister and I'm going to acti uh, activate Magister's effect to, uh, sorry, Mighty Master's effect to destroy the Magister upon, upon the activation. Putting this card in the graveyard, another card, another negate you could summon out with Selene. And then Mighty Master will negate by bouncing the Abductor that has like five counters on it. Then you're going to scale the Magical Abductor and use Magical Abductor's effect and scale to be able to search any monster from your deck. Because uh, it has removing three counters from Citadel. Citadel has like ten counters at this point. To search yourself a Mighty Master or a Magister, whatever you want. Uh, you don't really need another Magister. We're going to search another Mighty Master in this situation. Next, uh, we're going to actually scale the Mighty Master. Uh, uh, before we scale the Mighty Master... We're going to now use uh, Magician Soul's effect to send both Institution and Citadel to draw two. So now you have plenty of negates you won't need for Cross Sheep and all your combos. Uh, but we're going to draw more with Souls. So let's see what else we have. So now we have these. We drew another Citadel. We drew another Master. Uh, uh, sorry, the Cerberus. These four are essentially dead right now, but it doesn't matter. You just don't. You already have everything you need. But you're going to save these for your follow-up to kill them with. Uh, and you're going to actually you're going to scale the Citadel to hold even more counters. At this point... You want to uh, figure out what's the best value out of your Pendulum Summon. So you're going to scale your Mighty Master. So at this point, you want to think, okay, what value can I get here? Like, how can I get the absolute best value out of all this? So the best value here, you always want to keep a Jackal at all times. Uh, just in case you get uh, just in case you get hit with uh, Nibiru. So you're never going to want to link this Jackal away. Uh, what I think the best play here would be is to link away these... The Souls and the uh, uh, Mighty Master into a Mascarena. I will then Pendulum Summon literally one Mighty Master. Uh, sorry, I'm going to put the Mascarena right there. Pendulum Summon one Mighty Master. That's just the best value. 
And then after that, you're going to use Mighty Master Effect. Uh, you have Jackal has infinity counters. You're going to summon the Mighty Master, destroying a Citadel. You're going to activate Citadel's effect to remove one counter from it to protect itself. And then you're going to, uh, so you don't have to destroy anything at all. You could also, if you want to, destroy the Abductor and then hold more counters in your cards with Cerberus, get a Jackal, get another free Cerberus on here. But there's just absolutely no reason to do so. So you're going to do that play where you protect the, the Citadel via that combo. Then you're going to go into Absolute. You're going to go into your Cross Sheep here. Cross Sheep and then Vortex Effect will trigger. This will bring out uh, any souls or anything of that sort that you want. So you're going to or whatever, Blue Boy. Then you're going to link these into a Selene. And then you're going to ensure to put uh, the... If you notice, I put the Masquerade in the middle. Jackal's already in the far zone. More Vortex already in the far zone. Putting a uh, Masquerade in the middle ensures that you get two summons from Selene. Uh, then at this point, you're going to summon out a Mighty Master. And then on the opponent's turn, you're going to have the option of another Reflection if you want to. Because you have Magister in the graveyard. You have literally so many counters in your field right now. It's insane. Uh, you could, If you want to put even more counters, you could put a Jackal, a Cerberus on. You could have popped the Abductor if you wanted to. To get four counters via Cerberus and Jackal coming back. But you have more than enough counters that you need to do your stuff with. And then on the opponent's turn, you're going to have 1 negate, 2 negate, 3 negate, 4 negate, 5 negate, 6 negate. A Garuda as well uh, to bounce something your opponent's not expecting. No deck is playing around this. Let's say they draw some crazy god hand with like triple, like three, three triple tactics talents. Which you negate one of each. You still have more than enough to negate them with because... You can summon this back. You also do cool plays of Selene, Special Magister, Mighty Master will be bouncing a card back. Mas Masquerina will link this away, freeing up space for Magister. Because uh, Masquerina will, let's say, for example, link this with the Unicorn. You can bring out a Reflection. Uh, you can do lots of cool plays. You could do so much plays, it's unreal. So you could even like link these into another Selene, uh, Magister, uh, like bounce these back, bring uh, back another Mighty Master with the card that you bring back another Jackal. Because let's say Mighty Master bounce this. Celine, bring this back. Madison, like, there's so many plays you could do. So you end on a total of six inter interruptions very easily. I would definitely spin back to Magister when he doesn't expect it, because I'm sure he's not expecting a reflection to come. So you could have two bounces, and you have three cards in hand. And you have three bounces with this. So your board is crazy. Uh, so yeah, that's the comp tutorial. I hope you guys understand it. Uh, one thing important to note: let's say we didn't open this good. Let's say we open pretty shit. If you open pretty shit, uh, let's say you have some board of like Vortex, Mighty Master, Jackal, and like jackal you know that's like a typical board or let's say let's say you end on just this okay one second you end on some weird board this is a typical board as well i see this board a lot okay so this is your board all right uh even a mighty master in graveyard okay you have mighty master in graveyard for because of the vortex so this is your typical board with selene summoning this back it looks crazy right it looks like five negates like you auto win this looks like an auto win it, uh, sometimes uh so you but you lose to normal summon one zodiac so you never want to lose to that situation. So even when you have a situation like this in game one and you don't know what you're playing, okay? You have a random Selene to bring back something random. Even if you don't know what you're playing, and okay? Instead of bringing back a Jackal, it's even just like this. Link these two, okay? Yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but link these two into a Mascarena. Obviously, you're going to have a card in hand for Unicorn in this situation if you open just this. Even this is an FTK against every deck, okay? You still have a spell Trap Negate, a Monster Negate, an Omni Negate, and then you get the Unicorn in case they have a Zodiac. I can't stress it enough. I've lost many games on Rated by ending on a board that I just showed you guys of like, this is five Negates with like a Mighty Master in Graveyard, and then my opponent is just going to Normal Summon, Whiptail, uh, XYZ Climb into six Material, Zeus, blow up your board. It's gonna happen, okay? Sometimes what if it's like this instead as well? It's even, e even worse. So make sure to always have game one and Mascarena handy. Always, 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 always. And if it's not a Mascarena, make sure it's a Garuda in hand. If it's not a Garuda in hand, make sure it's a reflection in the graveyard for Selene to summon back. You at all times need one of these. Or you could also just resolve a Magister, have a Magister or a Magister in graveyard to bring reflection. Always need one of those. Anyways, that's the combo tutorial. It ensures to defeat this entire meta. Make sure to not miss the videos I'll be posting this upcoming week, showcasing how to destroy literally all five of the top Texas meta specifically and cool combos to defeat them all, utilizing eccentric and cool other cool plays. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you all for watching. As you guys see, pen best deck. Let's go. So if you guys want to see more pendulum content, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell 100%. The next week, I'll be posting five more videos on pendulums. Also, check out the beautiful True Gameplay Mat. $30 sale right now. And for extra, extra pendulum content.
check out the Patreon. Let's go. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.